Hello, and welcome to today's session, How AI Spurs Employee Engagement and Innovation at Levi Strauss and Company. I'm joined today by three very impressive speakers. I'll be as brief as possible with these introductions so we can get right to the presentation, which I'm really excited to share with you today. So welcome everyone, thank you for joining. And to those who may be watching this at a later time, we thank you as well and hope you enjoy the presentation. David Kiron is the Editorial Director of MIT Sloan Management Review and Program Lead for its Big Ideas Research Initiative. Previously, David was a senior researcher at Harvard Business School and a research associate at the Global Development and Environment Institute at Tufts University. He's co-editor of two books, Human Wellbeing and Economic Goals and The Consumer Society, and co-author of more than 100 articles, research reports, and case studies. Shervin Kotabande is a senior partner and managing director at Boston Consulting Group, where he co-leads BCG's AI practice in North America. He has nearly 20 years of experience driving business impact from AI and digital analytics. He has worked with premier brands across the globe in consumer, retail, financial services, travel, energy, and healthcare. Shervin is an expert in organization-wide analytics transformation, and he's helped numerous companies devise their analytics strategy, drive growth, and margin through analytics solutions uh, and build internal teams and capabilities. Katya Walsh is Senior Vice President and Chief Strategy and AI Officer at Levi Strauss and Company, where she focuses on setting the company's holistic digital and corporate strategy. Previously, she was the first global Chief, Chief Global Data and Analytics Officer of Vodafone Group and held strategic data analytics leadership positions at Prudential Financial, Fidelity Investments, and Forrester Research. Walsh was named the UK's Data Leader of the Year for three consecutive years by the Women in IT Award Series. She holds a doctorate in strategic communications from the University of Missouri, Columbia. To give you a brief overview, <laughs> uh, to give you a brief overview of our program today, David and Shervin are co-authors of the recent report, The Cultural Benefits of Artificial Intelligence in the Enterprise, and they will first step us through some of the key findings from our global study. Then we'll hear from Katja directly about how Levi Strauss and company has seen cultural changes with AI that have led to more engaged employees and new innovative ideas. And for now, David and Shervin, over to you. Hi, hi everyone. It's Shervin here. Thanks for, thanks for joining. Uh, we're really delighted uh, to be able to share with you the uh, results of our fifth uh, year of collaboration uh, between uh, Boston Consulting Group and MIT SMR. Uh, this is uh, part of a, like I said, five-year sort of joint program where we've collectively looked at um, AI in the organization. So we've started since 2017. Prior reports have focused on framing the opportunity in AI, uh, looking at the profit pools by various sectors, importance of aligning with strategy, uh, reports prior to uh, reports after that started focusing on a path to getting value from AI, including how technology is necessary, but far from sufficient. And it's important to start changing processes and how humans and AI work together and the concept of organizational learning with AI and collaboration with AI. And that brings us to this report, which we're super excited to share with you around the organizational benefits that come from AI. It's not surprising that AI has a lot of financial and operational benefits for the enterprise. Uh, it's quite encouraging to see in the results of, of the report that there's actually a fair amount of cultural benefits from AI, uh, both at the team level as well as at the organizational level. Um, and, and sort of big takeaway for, you know, for me at least is that all the benefits that come from AI, all the change management, all the transformation, um, all the effort that's required to embed and scale AI in the organization need not happen at the risk of disenfranchising the people of the organization. In fact, the opposite, that people are happier. And, uh, well, happy is a term I use, but if you look at the data that, you know, David will share, uh, organizations and teams are more effective uh, in many, many uh, dimensions. So would love to share some of that detail with you. David, on to you. Thanks, Shervin. The, the next slide shows one of the one of the key findings we're going to talk about just very briefly, because we want to get to Katya as quickly as possible, because uh, she has some wonderful stories to tell about how AI is playing out in at Levi Strauss. This slide shows that 
uh, more often than not, if your AI solution is effective, it has a range of cultural benefits, we, which we identify as uh, like improved learning, improved collaboration, improved clarity of role, and, and improved morale. And even if you have AI solutions that aren't all that effective, which is represented in the 17% uh, uh, like lower level there in the slide, like you, you can get some uh, cultural benefits as well. And as, as Shervin was saying, this is very heartening to see that it's not just about improving profitability. You could actually, the quality, what it's like to actually be in an organization can change as a result of using AI. Like one of, one of the, one of the favorite uh, examples that I have from, from the report, and we have examples to illustrate each of these different dimensions of cultural benefit uh, is from KLM, uh, the airline. And they were able to identify passengers who would show up at an airport and predict who was going to be, uh, who's going to miss their flight. So uh, there was an example where uh, uh, the people would like load, get their baggage onto the plane and uh, they would, they would wind, wind up uh, having to take the, the, the luggage off of the plane. And oftentimes, I don't know if you've ever been on a tarmac, uh, just sitting there on a plane waiting for somebody's baggage to be offloaded because they missed the flight. It's common. Uh, uh, but KLM was able to figure out a solution uh, by loading the, their bags later um, or at, at the end of the process of, of, of loading uh, the bags. And so the baggage handlers... Uh, they were able to quickly find the bags. Uh, they, uh, the uh, flight attendants were much more, uh, uh, they, they didn't have to deal with angry passengers on the, on, the, on the tarmac. Pilots were able to get the plane off on time. The, the, the amount of interdependencies that exist on the, on, like in that flight crew, um, were, all of those interdependencies were improved as a result of the use of the AI in this application. Uh, so, so sort of last thing on this slide, I'd say is that if you had an employee engagement initiative with these kind of results, uh, you'd be pretty satisfied. So what we really unearthed was a re reinforcing, mutually reinforcing cycle where you need to be culturally open to using AI. And there's a lot of, there's a huge literature on, you need to trust AI, you need to sort of build confidence in AI, you need to sort of include business users and technologists in the development of like AI, like that's all, we didn't have a lot to add to that. Uh, but once you get, uh, once you start using AI and we, we talk about effectiveness of AI in terms of improved decision quality and improved uh, efficiency, and you start transferring learning from the organization into AI and you get these improvements in uh, the effectiveness of uh, uh, your, your behaviors, it then has all these cultural benefits, which then have, which can then kind of seed in the organization uh, a more fertile environment for the use of AI. And it kind of goes around and around and around. Uh, one of favorite examples to illustrate this comes from CBS. And they, uh, the, a, a president at, at CBS gave their data science, gave her data science team 50 years of KPI outcome data and 50 years of consumer research data and said to the data science team, hey, I, we've been looking at KPIs regarding the success of our TV programs. Are these the right KPIs? And they came back and said, you know what? Most like several of these KPIs are are fine, but we should really be including these other KPIs. And what's interesting about that and the way it connects with culture is that cult, if you think about culture in terms of operating on three different levels, in terms of behaviors, values, and assumptions, which is a way of thinking about culture that uh, Ed Schein from MIT developed like many, many years ago, they have, uh, she was actually using AI to question assumptions that were essential to like how they were thinking about uh, performance. And they wound up changing like what they valued 
uh, in the organization in terms of uh, uh, TV success, successful TV programs. So uh, AI can have a dramatic effect, not only at the, uh, at the behavioral level, but also in terms of the assumptions that drive that, that are like really at the foundation of what an organization's culture is all about. So uh, those, uh, so this, this, this dynamic is, is one of the kind of key findings that, uh, that we had. We talked to a variety of executives in different industries and in different geographies, and they, they all had something positive, something positive to say about the cultural benefits that they were finding from their use of AI. Um, and we have a, a number of quotes to illustrate. Uh, so from Moderna, McDonald's, H&M Group, PepsiCo, Spotify, a really a diverse group of uh, organizations are finding cultural benefits from AI, which is, which is a very nice lead in to Katya. And, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Shervin, you, you were, do you have anything to add to? Uh, I, I, you, you covered it well, and I, and I don't want to take much time away from Katya, but if there was one thing I would sort of maybe echo in what you said, David, is that, you know, for years, as you know, we've been working with organizations across the globe and helping them implement AI. One of the, the sort of biggest hurdles we hear from senior management, from CEOs, from other executives is that it's all good, but we really need to change our culture. And there is a there's sort of some cultural aversion to adoption of AI. And I think this you know, the, the three circles that you had and sort of the point of this report is that's exactly right. The, but the very implementation of AI itself actually helps improve that. And so you don't need a separate culture change effort just so that you build a bunch of solutions and force it down to the organization. The very nature of doing AI projects and seeing the impact of those projects change the effectiveness of the teams itself creates more and more trust in AI, and and sort of that virtuous cycle is is really that, you know, the 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 icing on top of the cake is that you know just by doing it you're going to solve your cultural problems. So don't don't think of the cultural problem as a separate hurdle to be overcome. Just get into the the. The, the habit of doing more AI implementations and that itself, that process itself will result in a, and, and the examples you talked about, David, just keep echoing that, 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 that actual process of going through the implementation of AI and seeing the results itself reinforces the culture you're going to need to do more of it. So that's all I wanted to add. And Katya, on to you to share some of your, uh, from your practitioner's perspective, how it's been been at, at Levi's. I'm sure everybody's dying to hear from you. Thank you, Shervin and David. And you said it uh, perfectly, uh, the act of implementing AI in practice across the organization is what makes the culture change. Uh, just that like you learn by doing, you also transform a culture by doing that. And I would venture to say that growing your own data scientist is the key, or at least one of the keys to changing the culture in an organization. So at Levi Strauss and Company in 2021, we faced the same challenge that so many companies around the world have faced as well. And it is the shortage of talent in AI. As you well know, um, there are about 10,000 uh, sophisticated AI practitioners in the world. Uh, there are about 200,000 less sophisticated but uh, well-practiced um, experts in AI, but there are millions and millions of jobs and openings uh, across the world. And uh, in my experience, having been doing this kind of work for the last 25 years, my entire career in various companies, I know that the competition for talent in this space has always been an arms race. However, COVID really intensified it because it made every company digital, it made every company a data company, it made every company a technology company. And with that, it created an even higher demand for this talent. So what do you do? How do you solve this problem? Uh, at Levi Strauss and Company, we turn to our own employees and we introduced an industry-first machine learning bootcamp 
that for the first time in my experience did not require any previous background or experience in coding or statistics. As you know, there is no shortage of boot camps and educational programs in this space, and I'm very grateful for that because it really helps us uh, address the talent shortage. However, uh, companies and organizations still have a ways to go to truly democratize this space and to make it open to people with no prior experience. Uh, you know, a lot of us here on this podcast have lots of degrees and we spent a lot of time studying and earning those degrees. At the same time, some of the best people in the teams I've led around the world in various industries have been people with no formal degrees in this space. Because as we know, this is a lifelong field of learning. Uh, you know, we may get a PhD in data science today and if we don't continue to learn, it will be um, obsolete. That's how quickly things develop. So at Levi's, we started this bootcamp that um, was open to all people around the world of Levi's across any functions, retail stores, distribution centers, finance, design, from the most analytical functions to the ones that were less obvious that may be the source of talent in this space. Uh, we had a pretty sophisticated and selective um, application process. So just because it was open to everyone didn't mean that it was for everyone. We wanted to see people who had the aptitude and the attitude to learn and develop in this space. We tested about we tested people on their curiosity, uh, on their problem solving skills, on their analytical skills. So we had developed the proprietary now no code challenge process. Uh, so they didn't need to know how to code, but we did want to test ways of thinking and ways of problem solving. And we put 101 people through this boot camp in the past year. Everyone who started the boot camp completed it. It was an eight week um very intense boot camp. We coded boot camp for a reason. It was not unlike the Marines boot camps. Uh, people had to work in teams. They faced a lot of challenges. It was very intense. They were very tired. I think they had to take some time off um, right. after the boot camp ended. And during the boot camp, they worked with Levi's data to solve Levi's problems. And after the boot camp, we created a community of all these people throughout the enterprise. Uh, 10 out of the 101 people joined my team in strategy and artificial intelligence, but the vast majority, 90 so uh, people, went back to their old jobs, thus upgrading the roles they had come from. And that is really something that penetrates the culture of the organization and shows how the ways of thinking, the ways of working, the ways of solving problems can change by placing all these people after we train them in their old jobs where they're really making a change. That's fantastic, Katya. So what, what, um, how would you characterize the, the, uh, uh, like the, the morale, were, were there any sort of morale benefits that came from these people's, uh, participation in the boot camp and, and, uh, and, uh, how, how, how they, how they felt about working at Levi Strauss after having gone through this process? There are so many benefits to this kind of program. Uh, some benefits are hard benefits that we have actually quantified. Uh, while uh, we did not expect this bootcamp to pay for itself, it was truly an investment in people. We were actually pleasantly surprised when we were tracking uh, what people were doing after the bootcamp, and we realized that they were writing Python scripts and automating uh, old manual ways of doing things, uh, which was now saving the company hundreds and thousands of hours in repetitive manual processes. But there are also softer benefits that are perhaps even more important. And you are alluding to one of them, or actually asking directly about one, one of them, David, and that's the engagement of these employees and of their managers. Uh, we did follow with our first cohort the 101 people that I mentioned, we divided them into two cohorts. We had one in the spring and one in the autumn of 2021. So six months after the first cohort graduated, we, we um, engaged them in an anonymous survey just to see what they really thought of, of the boot camp, of the program, of the curriculum, of the ability to apply their newly uh, acquired skills in their day-to-day -day jobs. And certainly we saw that they were applying um, 
the majority of the graduates were applying these skills in at least 25% of their day-to-day -day job, which is actually more than we thought would be possible. It's not as much as we'd like to eventually, but it's still more than we thought possible given the demands of um, some of these jobs. And I'll tell you a little bit more about what these jobs are. Uh, but the other benefits were renewed um, energy about the company, loyalty to the company. We, The world has been talking about the great resignation uh, that all companies are experiencing. And we are seeing that people who have graduated from the boot camp are actually much more likely to stay with the company. Their managers are actually interested in staying with the company themselves and sending more people to the new cohorts. This year, we will continue with the cohorts. We will again have a spring cohort and an autumn cohort fully supported by the managers, which is not an easy task because they have to do away without key people in their jobs for eight weeks at a time. And yet the managers are supporting that because they're seeing the benefits, including cultural benefits of the boot camp. Yeah, Katya, one of the things, you, I mean, a lot of what you said, uh, you know, was, was quite encouraging. But one of the things I really, uh, uh, picked on was uh, what you're looking for in the application process itself, which of course, everybody or most people think, well, this is AI, it's technology, it's data science and machine learning and advanced stuff, which it is. But you talked a lot about curiosity and wanting to learn and basically wanting to get your hands dirty and, and get going with it. And, uh, it's quite encouraging to hear that, you know, from you as well. And David, it, it also corroborates, you know, the work from the prior report that's talking about like the importance of collaboration with AI as a way to, un, you know, unleash value. So it's not a black box that, you know, somebody else builds and then everybody has to use somehow in their, you know, processes, but it's actually something that the rank and file in the organization have a ability to help design and access and, and, and work with um, so that the, the concept of curiosity and, and learning uh, both as a, uh, as a necessary attribute of somebody who, who, who wants to get into, into the field as well as an enabler of uh, success in, you know, in that. It, it's quite encouraging to hear that. Yeah, there's, there's like, I'm not hearing a lot of fear like there, there is more curiosity and like, what, what can I do differently and how can I be innovative and how can I be entrepreneurial sort of with my own career and my own interests? It's not like AI is some, 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 some fear. Evil some monster thing. in the organization. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Exactly. Uh, Katya, uh, can you share a little bit with us and the audience some typical AI projects? Yes. So uh, first of all, I, I do want to mention uh, and agree with David that there isn't fear. In fact, for this boot camp, we had over 450 applications for what ultimately was about 100 and so spots. Um, so you can see the interest, the demand, and the curiosity as well. Uh, but I'll give you examples of the type of work that our boot camp graduates actually have done. And the opportunities are endless. So at Levi's, we talk about using AI to create smarter connections with consumers, smarter commerce, and smarter creativity or creation. And th these are some real world examples from our bootcamp graduates um, in the case of smarter connections with consumers. One of our bootcamp graduates was the manager of our Levi's premium outlet store in Denver, Colorado. This is someone with no prior experience in machine learning or coding or statistics until the day before the bootcamp, she was ringing jeans at the cash register. And um, during the bootcamp, she started to pick up coding and Python and libraries and work on real use cases. And when she went back to her job after the bootcamp, she still faced a lot of the usual challenges around where can I find the data and how can I get it at my fingertips? That is always a problem that every company has to solve. But she also um, had her mindset of um, doing what she needed to do, uh, having been a stylist herself, helping people dress and come up with an outfit um, that will be best for them. And she actually developed an algorithm that 
proposed the optimal items that can be bundled together. So she used her real world experience, combined that with a machine learning algorithm. And after the bootcamp, she would use the results of that algorithm to make recommendations to her clients uh, as one example. Um, and it's also a combination of how the judgment and the uh, human experience can combine with, with the machine uh, and the algorithm created from that. Uh, we also talk about smarter um, commerce. We have another bootcamp graduate who was working in the distribution center. And for years, she had been facing this problem as do a lot of other retail companies. Um, usually in a distribution center, there will be some kind of equipment that would malfunction or stop working altogether. And there would be a downtime of anywhere between 15 minutes and two hours, uh, at which point you can't do anything. You're still paying labor costs, but you cannot ship orders to consumers. It's highly disruptive and inefficient. And so this bootcamp graduate, another woman, and we had a lot of women, two thirds of the first class were actually women. Uh, but in, at this point, this graduate, um, armed with what she had learned during the bootcamp, set out to create a predictive maintenance algorithm that would do exactly as I said, it, it would predict which equipment would be likely to malfunction or stop working altogether in the next 30 days. She did that, she created the algorithm. She also created the Streamlit app and people in that distribution center now using the app and are proactively dispatching technicians to address any kind of problem before it occurs, thus eliminating this inefficient downtime. This is created by someone who had no experience whatsoever with coding before. And then another example in the area of smarter creation, you know, Levi's is a creative company at the end of the day. Um, it has always prided itself in being innovative, but also offering something that only the imagination can bring to life. And one of our bootcamp graduates uh, set out to combine the best of imagination with the best of uh, mathematics and algorithms. So he created a style transfer algorithm, uh, basically a, a convolutional neural network. He fed the neural network uh, millions of images from art and then um, superimpose that on our classic iconic products like the, this Levi's tracker jacket with my name. And out came a new AI inspired design. In one case, it was a Van Gogh Starry Night tracker jacket, which we will now be producing and, and offering. So these are just some examples, real world from the bootcamp graduates that I hope show the world what is possible and you don't have to have a computer science degree um, and you don't have to have spent your entire career doing that. All you have to do is be curious, be a problem solver and, and take the risk of doing something new. That's really, really cool. One of the things I wanted um, to uh, probe a, a bit, Katya, is clearly 101, uh, which is an omniscient, it's a good number uh, of sort of AI magicians, if you will, or, or, or uh, uh, you know, aficionados in the organization coming up with ideas uh, that could be a lot of ideas and a lot of cool ideas. So I, I, I could see a, a, you know, that's sort of accomplishing your goal of sort of democratizing and, uh, and, 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 and it, the art of the possible and, and, and inspiring and all that. Now, some of these projects end up having significant impact on the organization like that predictive maintenance thing that then i assume could be rolled out to other areas uh can you talk a bit about the sort of the process that you know you put in place so that um uh, you don't sort of stifle innovation and and new ideas and sort of that excitement but also you sort of channel all that energy towards what's you know most impactful for the organization so for example is there like a did you use a was there an approval process to to pick to, to sort of have a sanctioned project uh to go with uh if some if if a project ended up having significant uh, sort of enterprise-wide potential then obviously a lot more investment would be required to sort of 
scale it and embed it and expand it. Share a little bit about the processes uh, that, that you put in place to sort of take the best of these nuclei of ideas and, and, and get them to, to be meaningful uh, drivers of value for the organization. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good question, Sherwin. So I've always found it very helpful to have this motto in these transformations of think big, start small, scale fast. And this bootcamp was no different. Um, we're still developing the processes, by the way. This is very much something that's truly agile. Um, we have made mistakes, we have moved quickly, we learn, uh, and we continue to innovate. So with the first cohort of the bootcamp uh, from the spring of 2021, we didn't have any kind of formal process. We wanted to see what was possible. And as you said, um, we didn't want to stifle innovation. And I'm glad because some of the things that I just mentioned probably would not have happened if we had introduced the process too quickly. Mm -hmm. What we realized, however, was that while we didn't want to stifle innovation, if everyone was coming up with their own ideas, it would be inefficient, that there would be a lot more power in teams working together. Mm -hmm. So with the second cohort, we tried to do something different where we we channeled most of the time of the graduates on projects that were already on the roadmap and the priorities of Levi Strauss and company mm -hmm. to the extent that they fit and the interests and the skills aligned. And we also align. So it's the art of and it's not but, but it's and. And we also um, enabled people who had certain problems to solve or passion or there was something that was really important that they needed to tackle outside of that so now we are looking at can we do both uh, can we absolutely support a roadmap with scale uh, making sure that th there is power in the numbers and where more people can work together to solve a single problem while at the same time we empower people to pursue something that different and innovative so we'll keep you posted um, but we will continue to innovate. What I'm yeah. telling you today may be different tomorrow. Yeah, that's it's a balancing act, and you've got to be uh, agile and 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 adaptive, and and that that makes a lot of sense. So, Katya, sort of another question on on this community that you're building through these boot camps. Are you are you actively managing or considering sort of managing the uh, this basically a sub community that's like growing within your organization that's uh, that involves the democratization of uh of ai like how, how are you thinking about this this community as it as it develops i'm thinking about this community as the real agent of change for a company like levi strauss and company uh, what's great about Levi's is that it has always had innovation in its DNA. It was one of the first companies in the United States to file for patents. It has always pursued something different. Um, so while you know it has the, the great um, asset of a brand that everyone in the world knows, wears and loves, it also carries in its genes um, this uh, spirit of innovation. Uh, so the community that I'm describing is um, is just another form, uh, and it's and it's not formal. Yes, it's people who have graduated from the boot camp, but there are also people throughout the company that may be related to what we do. Their stakeholders, their partners. Uh, the the great thing about AI is that you cannot do this alone. It truly does take a village. So it's it's not a formal community. I personally lead a town hall that we informally call Coffee with Katya. Uh, we also, though, have a digital enterprise office across the enterprise to make sure that we harness the imagination, the energy, the prioritization, the uh, resources of all functions and all geographies where Levi's operates. So we have a digital influencers network as well. We have forums like this where we invite people from outside the company uh, and we are always learning. As I said, it's not all formal. It's It has some processes because without processes, it would be complete chaos, but it's also very open and iterative and agile so that we keep innovating. So how many people uh, net net have gone through the bootcamp now? So far, 101. 
And in 2022, we plan to graduate, graduate another 120. So a cohort is how many? Just about oh, 100? 60. 60, okay. Yeah. Okay, no, that's pretty cool. The other thing that, that, that this um, corroborates, David, is the, 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 the three circles that you had with the, you know, um, culture, uh, AI mm -hmm. use, and effectiveness, right? And, and, yeah. and that, you know, what we talk about in the report is that it works at the team level, so, you know, whether it's a team of, you know, 10, 20, 100 people, you know, David, you talked about the uh, sort of that airline uh, operations team working better together. But it also works at the overall organization culture level, right? So it's sort, sort, sort of that uh, virtual cycle work, works at both the team and the culture level. And, and what you're doing, Katya, is a grassroots efforts that sort of uh, incubating a lot of uh, these new these new ways of working at the individual and at the team level, and then it's sort of dissipating it into the overall organization, so that you're actually even changing the way probably the organization thinks about collaboration and teaming and even projects to a, to to a, to a large extent, right? Like this notion of I need to know exactly what I'll get what the pros uh, and you know, benefits and, and, and costs are of a project, exactly what will happen before I even get started. This, this openness to test and learn uh, goes beyond just AI. And, and, I, I, and I'm, I'm sure that the benefits of, the cultural benefits that Levi's is getting from a program like this is beyond just the implementation of AI. And, and, and I'm sure that it's beginning to actually probably even impact the organization at it at a broader scale. Is that is yeah. it wishful thinking on my side, on my part, or is that there's truth to that? Oh, it's absolutely the reality. Um, this is nothing short of a revolution, a very peaceful, very excited, very energetic revolution of a culture, of a company um, that we are all leading together. As I said, it's not something that one person can do. And my colleagues on the Digital Enterprise Office and I are very engaged um, and the best way to to teach something is to actually live it and show it going back to the beginning of this conversation so that's exactly what we are living and showing together to pave the next 200 years of this iconic brand well said fantastic this is so great thank you everyone i'm back <laughs> i've been chatting with some of you in the chat uh console i really appreciate all of the insightful comments and questions i think we hit many of them with this conversation kind of naturally. So really appreciate David Shervin, your time in presenting the study and asking these insightful questions. And of course, Katya, your insights about what you've been up to. And if you have a second to look at the chat later, um, a lot of praise for what Levi's is doing here and really recognizing how both innovative and just really inspirational this is for other organizations as they think about how do they keep their employees happy, engaged, you're upskilling them at the same time, um, and you're making use of such important assets with both the human resources and the data that you have to contend with. So I thank everyone so much for their time on this. Um, we do have, um, if you want to pull out your phones, everyone, we have uh, some further information on this upcoming slide here that talks a little bit about our study. So if you head over here, you'll be able to see all previous artificial intelligence and business strategy studies that we've undertaken in partnership with BCG. You'll also be able to see some of our recent podcast episodes. I was chatting to a lot of folks who had questions like, well, wait, just wait till April 5th. Katja addresses a lot of these questions and comments in the episode of Me, Myself, and AI that we'll be launching in just a couple of weeks. So if you check in there as well, subscribe to the show, you'll be able to get that updated and, and continue the conversation with us via that. And that's, that's really all we've got. So appreciate everyone's time. Have a great rest of your day and thanks again for joining us.